Kentucky Wildcats. Hi everyone, Jeff Picoro and Steve Wolf. Courtside at Rupp Arena. Steve, game one went right down to the wire. A fantastic finish. We saw two of the top players in the country in Slay and Monroe. And in game two, we're going to see three of the very best. Let's start with Western and their big guy in the middle. Well, the big man, seven foot one, Chris Marcus, 285 pounds, but he's got soft hands. He can take it down the low post. Very, very hard to stop. Takes it up strong and can dunk it. He also can seal back very well, making it easier for the passes to get in the ball, and then he takes it up strong. Also, he's a good passer, but he's double teamed, throw it back out to the dump twos outside. Chris Marcus, of course, led the country in rebounding last year with over 12 a game. Now let's flip it over and talk about the number three Wildcats. Tubby Smith squad is absolutely loaded, and it starts with one of their returning scorers, the top returning scorer from last year, Keith Bogans. Well, and Keith Bogans is an NBA-type person. He's got a great body. He can shoot the jump shot, but he also can go down low and seal him off. He plays very good defense and he's a good passer, but he needed another year of maturity in college basketball and the Wildcats are happy about that. The other guy that needed some maturity, they're very happy. He came back, the reigning Southeastern Conference Player of the Year, Tayshawn Prince. Well, Tayshawn Prince can shoot the NBA three. He also can take it inside. He's got a nice little hook shot. He can also pass. He's a great scorer, but he's a great team player. Both of them are wooden award candidates. Almost 17 points between both of them coming back for this year. This Kentucky team is very deep. We're going to have another great one for you as Western Kentucky takes on the Kentucky Wildcats next on Fox Sports Net. See Player of the Year, Deshaun Prince and Junior NBA Draft and stay with the number three Kentucky Wildcats. Tonight, they'll face the King of the Hilltoppers, seven foot one Chris Marcus, the All-American center who led the nation in rebounding last season. Joining him, his number one assistant, Derek Robinson, a junior guard with back-to-back 100-assist -back seasons. The Big Red won't throw in the towel just yet. It's Western Kentucky versus the Kentucky Wildcats next. In Kentucky, it is game two of the Pizza Hut NABC Classic. Western Kentucky takes on the number three team in the country, the Kentucky Wildcats. As Western Kentucky takes on the Kentucky Wildcats next on. Goro and Steve Wolf on hand. Should be a great game between Kentucky and, and Western Kentucky. And now to see God Bless America from the UK School of Music, here is Patricia Andrews. We ask that you stand and face the American flag above section 240. In game two of the Pizza Hut NABC Classic. Take a look now at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by G. Here's the starting lineup first for Western. They'll play the three guard offense, Steve, and try to counter Kentucky's attack with Curry, Robertson, and Rolls. Of course, the big guy, Marcus, on the inside. Boy, for the Wildcats, Marvin Stone gets the start tonight. He is going to have to be big in the middle for Kentucky. They also have the three guards in Hawkins, Finch, and Bogans. And of course, Tayshawn Prince at 6'10 will play the four position for Kentucky. Well, the chess match already has started. Now with the Hilltoppers, we've got Curry and Robinson, both very good point guards. Uh, Robinson playing the off guard tonight. But it's going to be a very good game. Pressure on both sides of the court. Steve, let's take a look at the Chrysler keys of the game, and what do you have for us tonight? Well, I think the big thing for Kentucky, uh, they have to, or Western Kentucky has to feed the post. They get a good ball into Chris Marcus, make sure he handles the ball all the time. They also have to make sure they handle the pressure, because uh, Kentucky's going to try to take them out of their game by full court pressure. Kentucky, they want to get Marcus out of the game. Try to do the opposite, and they have to recover the jump shooters because Marcus is a great uh, passer back out to those guys. Well, Marvin Stone wins the tap, and Tayshawn Prince loses it. Coming right back the other way is Curry. Now, for those of you who don't know, this Western team team, they're pretty deep, too. They can go 10 as well as Kentucky, so fatigue probably won't be too much of a factor tonight. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what happens off the, off the gun, playing in your own state and also playing in front of this many, these many people. Uh, you can see the little the jitters right here with uh, Curry taking in the lane. Bernardo Curry there took a little baby step before he took off. One step too many. Tayshawn Prince is 6 10. Kentucky really doesn't need a true point guard because they have four guys who are very good ball yeah, There's a little token pressure by Western Kentucky. Just to make him know that uh, Kentucky knows how to Marvin Stone, first shot of the game, and he drops 
puts it in. Oh, you see right off the bat, he's pulling himself out. Making sure Chris Marcus comes out and hits the guard. The pockets that time gets his feet taken up with Curry's. And Steve, if you're Western, these are some of the guys that maybe thought, man, I think I could have played for Kentucky. Some of them didn't even get recruited by the University of Kentucky. Oh, let's see, there's a chip on the shoe, but they want to prove that they belong as well as Kentucky does on this floor. Well, anybody in the tri-state, even sometimes the nation, they all think they can play here. This is a great place. Maybe more you can. It's a beautiful three-point jump shot. This is the very, very big game for the state team of Western. Boy, the kid from Portland, Military Academy, knocks down the play, and Western has the early lead over the Wildcats at 3-2. The pocket stops and pops in the lane, no good. But Marvin Stone comes up with it, and the big man has four early. Well, there's a little battle going on with Curry and Hawkins are trying to put that ball on one. They're jamming right now, but a little trash talking. Let's see what happens down the backcourt. Steve, you found out a little tidbit about Marcus. Is he might be slowed a little bit tonight by some bone chips, bone spurs. Well, Pete Herman said that he didn't think that uh, great, uh, Marcus was 100%, but uh, he's down a little early. I hope he'll be all right tonight. Rolls, that's his job. He was the sixth man for much of last year. But Jermaine Rolls hits a three. Wester two for two for the three-point line, and then got the early lead over Kentucky, six to four. If Kentucky has the killer's heel, it is a do not recover back to the three-point jump shot. Keith Nogan's three is a little hard in their last game of the exhibition season against Athletes in Action. The AIA boys knocked down 14 threes against the Wildcats. You need to get back out of the jump shot. If you don't, Wester's going to have a field day for the three-point jump shot. That's what they like to do. There's another one fired up for the wing, and Keith Nogan's claims the rebound. Cats on the run. Gerald Fitch inside, and he lays it in. back on defense, and they just didn't do it. One thing this small lineup does for Tubby Smith, they had a lot of quickness. They can really run the floor with these four players along with Marvin Stone. Robinson, open jumper, no good. Tayshawn Prince comes down with a rebound, and he can run the floor as well. At 6'10", he continues to grow. Beautiful pass to Keith Bogan. He is a quadruple threat, and that's one of the arms that he can do. He's got a beautiful pass inside to Bogan. Conversely now, Western has not even looked inside to Chris Marcus. He is a big man. That was a key. Get the ball to him. He hasn't touched it yet. Some people said if Marcus came out this year, he would have been an NBA lottery pick. Almost a lot to come out next year and be a lottery pick. Well, we talked about the 30 scouts upon the, 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 Marcus, uh, the Marcus watch. And it is as he draws the foul on Sparman Stone as he rolls baseline. Well, Pete Herman, the assistant coach. As you see, Marcus taking the ball to the basket. Pete Herman coach, is assistant coach here for Dennis Felton. He coached David Robinson for four years in, high, in college. And he knows how to coach big man. He said this kid is one of the best. And actually, they're going to call that on Cliff Hawkins. So Hawkins quickly comes out. And the freshman, Adam Childs from Ballard High School, comes in as Kentucky stays with the three guards. Yet to see, Jules Kamara sat out all of last year. They said one of the better players on the court in practice throughout last year and this year. And another jumper is sunk by Boyd. Well, you can went to a 2-3 zone that time. Still couldn't stop one for that jump shot. Three for three from beyond the arc is Western. And it's a 9-8 Western lead. They shot. Brent Sanzer puts a three of his own. Nice mind up that dribble. Free himself. Curry and Marvin Stone comes out, spots it away. One of the staples of any team coached by Tommy Smith is defense. Nice turnaround by Marcus. But he actually faded away at 7 1 and has such a nice soft touch. They have to get the ball on him. Everything should run through Marcus. Boy, oh, Marcus is really blowing out there. Maybe Steve, you're playing in a game like this, the crowd, the intensity, and really blowing out a chance if you can play behind Stone. He can play behind Stone. The other guys can help out the line. Rolls fired up an air ball on that three attempt. Going out of bounds. As Robinson.
Gibson was actually standing out of bounds, and we're going to take a breather. We're all knotted up at 11, 15.47 to play in the first. It's the Pizza Hut at ABC Classic, live from Rep Arena in Lexington. We'll be back with more after this. Game two of the Pizza Hut and ABC Classic. And Steve, Western has not blinked. 11 to 11. They have to be careful, though. Five of the first eight shots are from behind the arch. And as we said in the keys to the game, you have to go through Marcus. Unless he's shooting three point plays, he's not jump shots. Try to get to the ball. Oh. But here is Kentucky's dip. Now they bring in Eric Daniels and Jules Kamara. Eric Daniels get out of Cincinnati. One of the sweet surprises for Tyson last year. This year he's gained a little bit more weight as Prince puts up the jumper. And that's a little short. You know, Prince has that funny shot. Stevie Elmer shoots it from his balls instead of his legs. He comes, came back, and put in sparks. And he put in Vandoff. He also put in Vendoff. And, and Mike Wells, East Mike Wells, Bubba Wells' his brother, who plays Portland Trail Blazers. They have, a, they have a very deep bench also, so it's a little chess match right now. Well, like I said at the start, this isn't going to be a, a, you know, a game where you're going to wear out the other guys. Western has as deep a bench as Kentucky. Now, the difference, a lot of people say, well, yeah, but you're bringing in McDonald's All-Americans off the Kentucky bench, but Western still, they made the NCAA tournament last year, went into Sunbelt, got a very good basketball team. Well, they've won 26 of their last 37 games. They're really coming on. They've been blossoming as a place. What I like at Dennis Jones is when he's getting these guys in the game early, get them a feel. Like you said with Marcus, he was struggling, blowing a little bit because he's a little bit nervous. You know, uh, you're going to be nervous in these games, and you got to get your breath. So as you said, Patrick Sparks, another Kentucky kid from Muhlenberg North down in Central City, Kentucky. He's in the game. As is Philippe beaten up. That's beaten up with the ball, trapped in the corner. Gets it off the pan off, almost a bad pass. He gets it to Marcus. Kamara's down there, and Marcus brings it down. He gets free on the baseline. And well, then Sparks a great play on Charles. Western is his really far up. They, they broke the press. And I'll tell you what, uh, Charles went for the steal, and when he went for the steal, it allows um, Sparks to get the ball over and get the ball to Marcus for the wide open dunk. You don't go for the steal like that. Western, three of five, 60% from behind the arc early here. He fails, Kentucky now has three, none for Western. Hitting off to the step, and a dribble. Marcus a little bit nervous right there. Vidnoff's a very good jump shooter, and, and so is Federoff, and so, and so is um, Sparks, uh, uh, or Pandoff. Pandoff is a good shooter also, and they can shoot the three, and they're not afraid to do it. Number 45, Tudor Pandoff, he's a guy that was red-shirted last year. Got a little bit of strength in the offseason uh, last year, sitting out. Got his grades up, and is now a very strong player off the bench for Dennis Felton. That's the first foul out front. That's on Pandoff. What Felton is trying to do is put Pandoff on Prince. Pandoff is the most athletic player probably on this team. He's got excellent jumping ability, really physically gifted. A little bit of a mismatch, so they come back with Nate Williams, a 6'8 junior, to play against Kamara inside. Kamara, probably the most natural player on the court at 6'10 from Senegal. Runs like a deer. He shot Prince. This is his signature play. He backs his man down. Good plays. Hits the open jump shot that always gives this team a spark. Very interesting to see what Tubby Smith does. And as we look at the bench, two players that would be in the rotation in street clothes. J.D. Lemon, starting point guard. Got that ankle injury. And Rashad Proof also has a little bit of an ankle that's nagging him. They are both on the bench in street clothes. Well, he's done a couple different things. And during the exhibition season, he platooned. He took five guys out, put five guys in. Now he's mixing and matching with some of the starters. I think that's a little see which way is the best way of doing it. You know, we're also resigned with all Americans. Each team has three turnovers. Kentucky has six points off those turnovers. And Tayshawn Prince misses the three. Kamara keeps it alive, but it's pulled down out of there by Nate Williams. Nate Williams is a scrap. He plays with his back to the basket very well. We won't see him taking any jump shots outside. Shot 
off the jump shot. Nice play. Patrick Sparks, a 6 1 freshman. Brings it up, he gets open, fires, in and out. Three was all the way down and came back out, but it's kept alive by Western. New shot clock with 13 and a half minutes to go. Kentucky by two. Even though Marcus isn't in there, they still need to try to get the ball inside. Uh, they'll make an eight or 10 minutes for a dunk like that. Beautiful move is paying off, goes right down the lane. He nice, nice in and puts it through with the dunk. He is definitely gifted. And, uh, assistant coach Pete Herman said that he's, like I said, the best athlete. He's got excellent jumping ability, too. Prince gets his man in the air and open three on the way, in and out. Take shot, Prince. In the shooter out earlier today, Tayshawn was off on his shot. He was very hard on himself. He's waiting for him, talking to these guys here. They practiced throughout the week at Memorial Coliseum. Totally different shooting background here, Steve. Right, and right now, Western is seeing it's a different shooting environment here. They're struggling with the three foot jump shots. Foul on the inside on Sparks. We should add three very good referees here tonight in Tom Eads, Mike Thibodeau, and Kerry Sidney. Sparks Oh, but Steve, talk about that. Memorial Coliseum, a small gym. The, the shooting background is very close, tight. And then you come here, the huge expanses behind the basket. It's just totally different, isn't it? Well, for Western Kentucky coming in here and shooting in this place, or UK, UK's used to the, the playing in here. They play every for all their games. But Western Kentucky, especially with 20-some, 20 20-plus 20 thousand people yelling at you, and the different backdrop, it's going to make it hard for you. Marquise Esco, nice pass to Gerald Fitch, and he's fouled on the way in. Marquise Esco, another big man that Kentucky can run out there. Marquise is the junior out of Madison Central in Richmond. These guys are so deep that they, Marquise was able to give up his scholarship and become a walk-on to make sure they had room for other recruits. You also have uh, Hayes in the lineup. Hayes is an excellent rebounder. He had 13 rebounds against the Athletes in Action. This is Fitch's first Attempts today from the free throw line. He's got four points on the night already. But Hayes is the freshman. And he is the guy that is really going to have to kind of fill in the hole of Jason Parker, who re injured the knee and is out for the entire season. He will be redshirted. He's a physical player, which you does not have many physical players. But there's one chick in the armor of this Kentucky Wildcat team. Not a great free throw shooting team on the whole as Mitch misses both the women. There you see the jumper knocked down by Darren Robinson, the Vernon County kid, his first two in the game. Talking about free throw shooting, Prince shot 84, led the SEC. UK only shot 65 as a team. Beautiful back up that next time, a good finish. Gary Dickens drives in, Cincinnati kid drops it up to Marquis Esco. Esco loses his balance and throws it away. Scrappy play by Curry. He's all over the place. What a tremendous point guard. We saw him in the first game. We'll see him in the second game. Here's your 12 minute timeout. It comes at the 11.56 mark of the first half. Western leads the Wildcats of Kentucky 17 to 15. We'll be back with more of the Pizza Hut NABC Classic after this. Kentucky, the best seat in the house? Yeah, it is, but it'll cost you. $313,000 of those seats, 14 pair. It's an endowment for the scholarships here for the athletic team, the basketball team. It's a lifetime seat, two of them, $313,000. Hey, if you're interested, you still got three pair left, Steve. That's a little bit rich for my <laughs> Wow. This park is in semi puts it in. They love their basketball down here in Lexington, don't they? Yeah, they definitely do. That was an excellent penetration by Robinson. Nice underhand pass to the big fella. He's three for three inside. Marcus's. Marquise Esto puts it on the ground. Nice pass inside, but it's lost by Hayes. Out of bounds it goes. He'll stay Kentucky's ball. Hayes might have a little bit of the jitteries here. His first time playing in front of this crowd. They only had about 15,000 in here for the two exhibition games. Well, he is a strong person. They need to make sure that they don't forget he's down low. Yep. From Modesto, California, he can fill the void. And Parker is out for the season with the knee injury. Keith Bogans, leading scorer from a year ago. Nice pass to Hayes, and he loses it out of bounds. They didn't forget about him, but he forgot that he gets the ball. He was looking right to the basket, didn't look the ball into his hands. Steve, well, when you're throwing it into a big guy, don't you want to hit him up a little higher than that? You don't want to bring their hands down below their knees, do you? It wasn't a great pass, but you would need to have good hands when you're playing that post. He's got to learn to catch the ball. Western leads it by four. Kentucky applies pressure in the backcourt. Western breaks it. They break it with Bernardo Curry. Memphis East 
Andrada. Wells. Wells drives into the lane, almost took an extra step. Pull back just in time. Great. Now they get the open jumper again for Robinson. He buries it. That's a very good matchup for Western. Bonus is a good defense player. Got a little push up, created some space. And Robinson nailed the three. Western now four of nine from behind the arc. Kentucky just one of four. And it's 22 15 and back lead inside. This is a little bit more physical down low than UK. UK has got to take advantage of that inside outside. You can see right here, Wells reaching in. Stone will come back in the game. Good early for the Wildcats. Got a blow there. Estelle goes out. Now Hayes finds the open man. They're so good at passing the ball. The one thing the Wildcats do, the extra pass. And there you saw a pitch. Got into the lane, had the open nine-footer, but he had a guy underneath that made the pass. Well, it was a quick ball reversal. Hayes got, as soon as he got the ball in the wing, look for Fitch. Did Fitch penetrated? Look for Stone. Still, they, even though the Marcus is in, he can't be scared. You have to take it at him. First foul for Robertson, and Stone goes to the free throw line for the first time tonight. He's got four points, maybe five. That's one thing I think Stone has worked on over the summer, and he's going to get better at is taking the ball to the basket and being strong. He's got so much finesse in his game, along with uh, Estelle. Just didn't shoot a whole lot last year. He's a 50% shooter for the season, but only average six points a game. He knocks them both down, so he's at his average from here to go with six points. Now they've got Rose trapped in the corner, but he gets it away to Robinson. He gets it ahead going in. His point, he lays it up and in, and a foul on Fitch. A chance for the three-point play. Defense by Kentucky, and they let him out of the trap. Then it was all over because Bortz got down the fast break, laid it in. On that pitch, got, has got to let him go to the basket. You don't foul the guy when he's up, up in the air for that layup. Boyden's got eight, chance to get nine, and to give Western their biggest lead of the game. It's 24 17 now. Western's playing at a different speed than UK. Remember, Steve, the experimental rules that they're using for these preseason type tournaments or opening tournaments and for the NB NABC Classic, here's the new rules. Yeah, we like that old fashioned jump ball. <laughs> they also use the NBA free throw line, which is, of course is that foot wider. No free throws for fouls by the team in control. One of these referees get mulligans when they throw it up. <laughs> They've been throwing it up for so long. They do it once a game. He should get this tap. Back tap it to Fitch, and he does. But Rolls is there. Knocks it over to Keith Bogan. Immediately, they try to go inside. Is that his own by this? But they have Marcus right in the lane. He's throwing everything out. It was a good one by Stone. Not to take the shot, but that's it right on the hook. Three. Open things up a little bit by knocking down that three. Bogans hits his first three in the game. And Stone steps in front of Marcus. Ball knocked out of bounds by Marvin Stone with a good hustle by both the big men. Marcus and Stone as they really went after that ball. I'm surprised at how much problems the cross is giving Western Kentucky. What they need to do is get somebody in the lane. I don't know why Marcus is so far down. Get him out, hit the ball. He's the biggest guy. He can throw over top of the defense, move inside and weak side. It's one one reason it's so tough to press Kentucky because they put Prince at the point at 6'10 and he throws over. Yeah, and he also can go around. Yeah. Curry battles inside, loses it, pitch comes out. This guy is one of the top garbage men in basketball. Always comes up with a loose ball and loose rebound. Bogans drives, he's found. He's got Stylish Starks chipping away at the rest of the lead. With Prince and Bogans coming back, you can see these two guys on a string. They're looking for each other. Here's Prince with a nice cross-court pass, and Bogans making the NBA move straight into the lane. 
Bogans has seven points. Lead the free throw line to attempt his first free throws of the game. And Derek Robinson, the guy that they do not want to get in foul trouble, now has two. He's going to have to come out. Sparks is getting ready to come in, as is Philippe Vitinov from Bulgaria. Bogans knocks down the first, and it's a four point game. Western leads in 25 21. Bogans will have one more. And Tubby Smith's trying to feel out the game and see where he wants guys to play. He's got Childs back in at the point, moving Fitch around. You know, there was some talk as Bogans misses the second and gets his own rebound of possibly even redshirting Childs this year. Oh, Stone straight ball. Stone came from the top of the key, was not boxed out by Chris Marcus. An easy slam. because they just have so many players. But with the injuries to both Blevins and Carruth, you need that extra guard? Well, Carruth is an excellent player, but as you watch right here, Stone coming in from the top of the key. Not blocked out by Chris Marcus. Big man, this is your big, he's still gonna box out. Nice play inside, nice block out again by Stone, as you just said, Steve. Mark and Stone moved Marcus out of there. Keith Bogans on his way to 1,000 points. He's got 996. Four more points to be the 49th member of the Wildcat 1,000 point squad. Nice put back there by Hayes. He showed his strength as he's put up over the defender. Well, you can see Chuck Hayes is strong. He's still on the You have Bogans pushing him into position. He's not sure defensively where he's supposed to be. And he had the leader. Bogans tell him where to go. Titans ripped off seven straight. It's tied at 25. And Western goes back to the bread and butter. Marcus kicks it back to Sparks and right back inside. So he lost a shoe. One of the thoroughbreds from Kentucky is throwing a shoe. <laughs> it's Childs on the floor. Lost a shoe. Perfect time for a timeout. As they'll bring the blast down. Three shot. Angus Childs goes to the bench. 7 48 to play. We're all tied. 25 apiece at the Pizza Hut NABC Classic. Two very important people to the University of Kentucky. On the left in the suit, blue suit, glasses. That's Lee Todd, the president of the university, just in front of him in the glasses. Gray suit, W.T. Young, owner of Overbrook Farm. Horse racing fame. A couple of Kentucky Derby winners stand at his farm. And here in Lexington, the Wildcats and the Hilltoppers of Western are tied at 25 apiece. Kentucky put another player in the lineup, Josh Carrier, freshman. Bowling Green, Kentucky. His dad played at Western. That's what Josh Carrier can do, shoot the three, but Sparks got a hand on that one. He ain't shot, I'll tell you that. Another one of the long list of Mr. Basketballs that played for the Kentucky Wildcats. Carrier. Can absolutely knock it down if you give him an inch. There reminds a lot of people of Troy McKinley. Well, he was a heck of a, he's a heck of a high school player. But you see there, Bogans, an All-American, diving into the crowd. Coach Smith's got to be happy about that. Turnovers now. Five for Western, eight for the Wildcats. Points off the turnovers. Five for Western, nine for Kentucky off the five Western turnovers. Now Western. Traditional offense instead of that run and gun they've been in mostly. They slow it down a little bit. They get the good shot. Wells had a shot. I think mean, he took an extra step. Got about three seconds. Look to see Wayne trying to him. isolate on Gordon down low. He's got a freshman guarding him. A little bit of lull in the action here. It's been fast paced early in this game. Both teams are full court pressing. See who's going to blink first. Again, Tayshawn Prince, point forward for the Wildcats, brings it up. Five people in a Scotty Pippen type. Very good to his left. It's back to carry the Bogan. Inside the Marlins going to have the first four points of the game for the Wildcats. That was no good. But Keith Bogans is right there. Kentucky keeps it alive. 
This is an important time for Worcester, and with six minutes to go, had a chance to give Marcus a rest, get him out of the game. These guys need to keep, take control, make sure they don't lose the lead, or at least keep it at 25 all until they can get him back in the game. As if it's a stone. Hayes, and Kentucky's got a pretty big team on the floor right now. Harvey Stone just tries to back his way in. They're going to have a hold this time on Williams. Well, Williams is a very strong player, but he's a little bit shorter than Stone, and he's not, he's not as strong as Stone. If Stone is more physical this year, this Kentucky team does have a chance to buy for the national championship. Steve, when you're, you're guarding a stronger, bigger guy, you just have to get down low and use leverage, don't you? Well, and Stone is, Stone's got all the moves. The problem is he hasn't been physical in the past, and that's really hurt him. This time he's backing in a little bit. Stone can shoot the hook. He can pull up and shoot the jumper. He also can shoot the fadeaway. He's very talented. 25-25. It's been this way for over a minute. Both teams have slowed down a little bit. Marvin Stone puts it in. Western Kentucky just put Caleb in the game, and that is their 11th player to enter the game. Caleb Halkel, 11th player to enter the game in this first half. So they're trying to utilize everybody, get everybody in the flow early in this game. Hey, Marvin Stone has really come out on fire for the Wildcats. That's his ninth point. He's got a rebound. He's got an assist. He's got a block. And this is the guy that Tony really wanted to have a, a light of fire under him, so to speak. Good press break by uh, Sparks. Got the ball in the middle of the boy. He's swinging around in the corner. Get the open man. Ball will fall this time. Knocked around. And Rolls keeps it alive. Sparks gets it. New shot clock. That was good ball move. Even though the shot didn't go. I like the ball move. Another long three by Sparks. Tapped out by Rolls. And coming over the back. Well, the ball was out of the game. Shooting that three point jump shot. Sparks is a freshman. He really needs to get his feet under him. He wasn't ready on that jump shot. He's fading away. First foul of the game on Rolls. He came over the top of Tayshawn Prince. It's kind of a tough task to do there. Fritz goes 6'10 now. Tayshawn to the free throw line for his first time tonight. He's off to a little bit of a slow start. Only three points and one of five shooting. He's got a sweet touch. Shooting 84% from the free throw line. But you know what's great about Prince is, yeah, he's got four points. He's not scoring. He's doing the other things. He's making sure he's taking what the offense gives him. Gets everybody into the game. Second one on the way, and that's no good. Hayes keeps it alive. Coming off with it there is Beatnoff. Goes by straight in. Kentucky up by three. 28-25. Inside is six minutes to play here in game two. It's an NABC Classic from Rep Arena. Boyd strong inside, just moves the youngster, and he's out of the way. That's good, they have to keep it close till they get Marcus back in the game. Big strong move by Boyd against the freshman Hayes. Boyd's, Boyd has 11 now for Western. First player in double figures for him. That's to lead the one. Crowd wanted to walk there on Bogans. Hayes keeps it alive, but Sparks comes out with it. This Western team is scrapping. Beaten on, he'll fire a three. It's going to be hard, way hard. Bogans puts off with it. Two on four, and he'll pull it up. Beaten is really struggling with his jump shot. He's got a pretty shot, so I'm going to shoot around. Got a lot of air on those last couple of shots he's got. Franks again drives away, and he uses that big body to just lay it up and in. Well, he's, he's like an extension ladder. He goes up, and then he goes higher. With that uh, left handed jump shot, people aren't used to guard the left hand. He's getting up to a wide reframe. He's got great moves to the basket. Boy, he's got some long arms, too. And that's just dropped out of bounds by Gordon. He looked up, didn't catch the ball, and here comes three new Wildcats into the game. And Marcus comes back in for Western. Fitch, Kamara, and Daniels comes into the game for the Wildcats. And for Western, they have the big fella back in the lineup. They also have Mike Wells coming in for Rolls. They're down by uh, three points, and, and Marcus Mays, or, uh, Chris Marcus had a chance to stay out from the beginning of the row. Hopefully, he can take it through halftime. Marcus only six points and two rebounds so far in this game. He's a leading rebounder in the country last year with over 12 a game. Kamara drops it, Fitz gets it back. Here's Carrier's forte, the three, and it's a little hard. Battle four. Come off with his beat now for Western Kentucky. Western just a little quicker with the loose balls here. Open three for Sparks. He passes on it. It's a pretty good lineup UK is in there right now. The Wildcats and Kamara Stone and Prince in the back, the back baseline playing that 2-3 zone. 
6'5 carrier out in front of it. It sparks the smallest guy in the court. Makes a beautiful move to the basket. So little guys can still play this game, Jeff. <laughs> still up for me. Green steps out by the three. That's a bad shot there off the bottom of the backboard. That one even close. Well, sticks behind it. Foul as he just went into the body of Wells after he let the ball go. Well, right now, Western's got a small lineup. They're getting in transition, getting behind the defense. That's what they did on the play before. When Sparks drove the lane, he had 6'9, 6'10, 6'9 in the backboard. You gotta stop that. Wells goes to the free throw line for the first time to try to extend Western's lead to two. It's 31 30. Mike Wells, 87.5% free throw shooter last season. He must have had some good backyard games. He's been the left the nation in scoring at Austin P. That's some shooters in that family. 3.28 to play in the first half of game two of the Pizza NABC Classic. Western Kentucky leads the Wildcats of Kentucky 32 to 30. We'll be back with more after this. Kentucky, the Pizza Hut, NABC Classic, Western leads by two on plays like this from Sparks, Steve. The littlest man on the floor taking it through to the back line of UK. They got to stop that push, push penetration to the middle. And I'll tell you, Jeff, you would have told me with three minutes and 28 seconds left that Chris Marcus only have four shots, and they're still winning this game. I thought you'd be crazy. Coach Welk told us he's got some players, and we're deep. We can play with these guys. And so far, what he said is well true. 32-30, Western leads by two. Kentucky with outside passing, trying to get it down low. Daniels has it, goes right back to Fitch. Now they drop it into Kamara. Kamara right, turn around jumper from 12, no good. Sparks gets the rebound again. Wasn't that a shot? It's a pretty good shot, but the final medals here. Western's giving them one shot. Ducky not crashing the board here late in the first half. Sparks almost lost it. Panoff has it. Daniels on him. Nice defense by Daniels. Panoff loves to drive away. When you look at this game right now, there's not one starter from Western Kentucky on the floor. Sparks loses the second time he lost it. Bogus picks it up. Ducky a chance to tie or take the lead with the three. Bogus and Prince. He loses it out of bounds, and it'll be Western ball. Pass kind of hand comes to you a little bit. A little ratty play the last couple possessions up and down the court. Not a whole lot of ball movement on either end of the floor. One of the things that really worried Tubby last year, Kentucky seemed to start off slow in a lot of their games. Fall behind early and just play great ball in the second half. But he was saying, hey, we got to play from the opening tip. Western's still having problems with that pressure defense. You see Curry split the trap, which is what you're supposed to do, but you gotta take a dribble when you yep. split that trap. That's the ninth turnover now for Western Kentucky. Still Kentucky still, still trails by two. Still Chris Marcus back on the, ba uh, back on the bench. Kentucky hadn't scored in almost three minutes now. Marquise Esco into the game. He has it out front to Big Phil. He's got a nice jump shot from about 15 in as well. Daniel, Fitch, he'll take the open jumper. That's no good, a little too strong. Esco over the top. That's a foul. His first. I don't, I don't know if Kentucky's having a problem getting their rhythm. There's been a lot of changes in the lineup, and it's hard to get your momentum sometimes when there's different players playing in the game. The two constant, though, the whole first half basically have been Prince and uh, Bogans. So I'd like to see him play a couple of guys a little bit longer, get them run, get them in the game, see if he gets some flow to their offense. And Kentucky has 14 points out of Bogans and Prince. Western has had very balanced scoring. Wade leads it with 11. Western again working on the perimeter. Beaten off. He's going to drive the lane. The open route to the basket misses the layup. And when Vidnov hit the ball, went up underneath and hit under 
the backboard on the underside, and that'll be a turnover. And Kentucky will have it with 120 to play. Now, Kentucky working almost now on four minutes since their last play. Which tries to go down low to Prince. He's got it on the baseline. He's got the smaller Wells on him. Tries to drive in, and now they're going to call Wells for a push. That's the ninth team foul, so Prince will go to the free throw line and shoot two. Second foul now on Mike Wells out of Todd County Central. And Guthrie, Kentucky, back in the game comes Rolls. Also Boyd, and of course Chris Marcus. Prince to the free throw line. He's one of two tonight. He's got six points here in the first half. Averaged 16.9 last year. That one's a little hard. Bogans keeps it alive and knocks it out of bounds. And Western have a chance to extend their lead again. Kentucky just six of 11 from the free throw line. Western is perfect on both their attempts. They're two of two. Curry pulls it out front. Clock winds down inside of a minute. Curry drives, they're going to call it a touch foul. That's going to be on Gerald Finch. And for Finch, that's his second foul. Here we go, let's go. Get away, Back behind the white And the seventh foul on Kentucky, so that'll put Curry on the free throw line. Childs is going to come back into the game, and Finch will take a seat. Curry, what and the bonus. So Curry goes to the line, one and one. He's yet to score tonight. It's only taken one shot from the field. Of course, they've only had two free throw attempts, and they made both of those. Curry shot, a little short. Marquis Estel rips it down. Gets it off to Childs, who drops it, but Prince is there to pick it up. 43 seconds, about a 15 second differential in the shot clock and the game clock. Now Bogans drives to the free throw line, kicks it back up. Nobody has scored in three and a half minutes now. And a big drop. Now Estel, turn, jumper, one hand, no good. Keith Bogans takes a shot, falls out of bounds, but here comes Beaton on. He sets up for three, drops it off, that'll be a walk. Keith Bogans goes right back to Beaton off and says, hey. Keith Bogans got drilled in the chest by Beaton off and went down, and he came back and sent something to Beaton off. And, and Bogan came over to help his teammate. Now they're going to call a technical. It might be on Keith Bogans. But Bogan took a shot under the basket from Vietnoff, and then he came back to Vietnoff. He got right in his face, told him to back off. And then Boyden came over. And now both of them, Boyden and Bogans, are going to be assessed technicals. And there you see he came back, and there Bowden pushed Bogans, and he pushed back. So technicals on both of those players. And now there's going to be timeout. For both team fouls and personal fouls. So personal fouls and technical fouls, and that's what a technical is a personal Got foul a as well. So each player will get one. And Kentucky will call a timeout to try to settle things down a little bit. So now team fouls, 10 for Western, 8 for the Kentucky Wildcats. There's 19.9 seconds to play in the game. And Kentucky will have the ball with a chance to try to tie things up as they will hold it for the last shot. The Wildcats tonight, 13 of 28, I'm sorry, 11 of 27, just two of nine from behind the arc. Western, 13 of 28, four of 13 from behind the arc. The only thing that's kept Kentucky into the game, six of 11 from the free throw line. Western is two of three. So Eric Daniels will take the ball out on the Western end, and Western will press. Kentucky has Prince, Carrier, Bogans, Estel, and Daniels in the game. Boyd, Rolls, Curry, Marcus, and Beatonoff for Western. And Tayshawn Prince, the point forward, will bring it up for Kentucky as the clock gets under 15 seconds. Prince outside, gets it off to Carrier, knocked out of bounds by Curry. So Kentucky, with 9.4 seconds, will now set up a play from the timeline left side, just in front of us. And Bogans will be the trigger man. Tight man to man defense for Western. Again, nobody has scored. It's almost four minutes. Five seconds. Prince to Marquis Estel. Two seconds. Estel's going to have to get the shot up. He's not going to. He throws it away. And that'll be the end of the half. And Tony Smith looks very disgusted as he goes off. And Felton has to be happy the way his team has played for Dennis Felton. Western Kentucky will actually take the lead into the half. 
against the number three team in the country. Western leads 32 to 30. And Steve Wolf getting in position, and he now has Coach Dennis Felton. Steve? We are we're here with Coach Dennis Felton. And Coach, you got to look at this. Chris Marcus has four shots. You're up by two and a half. Well, you know, I knew that Chris wouldn't be at his full strength because it's the first time he's been on the court in about a week. And I'm just happy he's able to play some. You played 11 players the first half. You got everybody in the rotation early. Yeah, that's the way we are. I mean, we've got a lot of players, a lot of talent, a lot of depth of talent. And obviously, we're, we're far from a one-man team. Boyd has come up big for you this first half. Yeah, he's terrific. He's a good complement to our guys that like to bang in the low post because he can shoot. Good luck, Coach. Thanks. We'll be back with more Pizza Hut and the ABC Classic after this on Fox Sports Channel. Set to 46% from Western. Free throws, to only two of three for Western. It's been a Kentucky's Achilles heel, six for 11. Three point shooting, four to two. But from the bottom down, everything else kind of favors Western. Well, and I think that the way they're going to come out in the second half, we saw what happened when the underdog came out and really started playing tough. And that's what's going to happen this evening. If, if UK doesn't get back in the game early, take that first five in the second half. They're in for a whale of a ball game against this team. Now on to tonight's leading scores, and that is brought to you by CHA Health. Your kind of people and your kind of care. Now, it was the Kentucky bench that was supposed to be so good, but actually Western is leading the Kentucky bench 7-2. Leading scorers, as you said, Boyden with 11 for Western. And for Kentucky, surprise is Marvin Stone. Well, I'm surprised because, but, but then again, he's going in and taking it strong to Chris Marcus. He's pulling away from the basket, then taking him back down low. He's got a couple free throws in there. What they're going to have to do is make sure that Bogans and Prince take over. There's a different set of rules for these guys. These these guys are the stars. They have to come out with intensity. My personal opinion, they didn't come up as, as uh, like Western came out with the aggression and intensity that Western had the first half. Well, Coach Felton, his his kids have matched Coach Smith's kids point for point, and they actually lead by two. It's going to be a very exciting second half. Western leads the Kentucky Wildcats 32 to 30. We'll be back with more after this on Fox Sports Net. Western leads the Kentucky Wildcats 32 to 30 in game two of the Pizza Hut NABC Classic. Of course, the winner tonight will go on and take on George Washington in the championship game. The loser will take on Marshall. Let's revisit our Chrysler keys of the game and see a chess match between the two coaches. There's constantly somebody at the table getting ready to check in. And talk about how tough that is to get into rhythm when you're constantly coming in and off the floor. Well, it's really hard. And first and foremost, when you're playing this early in the season, the hardest thing is to get the rhythm offensively. So I think what Western has done very well is they've said, hey, let's put your people back and forth. But they've played excellent defense. Defense will win you games early because you can do that. It's just hard work. It's moving your feet. Offense will come later on. I wouldn't want to play UK in February, March, or April. But right now is a good opportunity for Western to take advantage of the poor offensive play by the University of Kentucky and them rotating the guys in and out they aren't getting any rotation they're not getting any feel for what's going on Steve the two best players in the Wildcats team are Tayshaun Prince and Keith Bogans both of them say they were going to try the NBA draft they both pulled back Keith Bogan here talks about playing with his running mate Tayshaun Prince it's, it's come through time though we've been playing together since my freshman year I've been on the same team for three years now we pretty much know what to expect from one another and we just learn how to play play with play with one another. Be very interesting to see how they come out this second half. Tubby Smith's teams have traditionally here at the University of Kentucky started off slow, and they come on like gangbusters in the second half. See if that holds true today against a very good Western team. You saw him in the shoot around. He wasn't very happy oh. this morning. Well, he knows he's got a very good basketball team. He wants them to practice like champions. He said you play as you practice, and that's why he stays on it. They open up the three-pointer from pitch. That's no good. The Byron Stone gets the rebound, throws it right to Derrick Robinson, will go back the other way to Western. Another turnover for the Wildcats. Marvin Stone, ready that basket for 6'10. You take that ball up strong enough to who's guard. Curry goes right by two defenders for Kentucky. Keeping alive on the board is Tayshawn Prince. Bogan's open on the wing, and he passes up on the open three. Kentucky is a team that always seems to make that extra pass. Yeah, and I think what they're missing, they 
Blevins. They call three seconds in the lane. The They're missing J.P. Blevins. J.P. Blevins uh, really took control of that point guard position, won it over Cliff Hawkins, and he's sitting on the bench with a bad ankle. But he could open it up with a three-point jump shot. Makes good decisions for the point guard area. And again, there's another one of those three-second violations, and Marvin Stone looked down and said, yeah, but I'm inside the NFL. Remember, it's the NBA lanes. As Marcus has jump shot way off the mark. Thought he was fouled as he looks back and reps and, hey, he got me in the arm. He says, nope, play strong, big man. 12 turnovers for Kentucky now, two this half. And we've only played a minute and five seconds. Neither team has come out of the gates early in the second half. Show me what they're ready to do. Kentucky, you gotta believe they want Bogans and Prince to touch it a couple times. Prince fires up Jones way strong that time. And again, Steve, this is the first game that Kentucky has played here that means anything. They've only played in this arena. This is the third game this year. They only practice here one time before each game. So the sixth time these guys have been on this floor yes. the Well, and it's the same for Western, too. You gotta realize that they can First foul on Curry. He's trying to cut off his man. He's late getting there. This bitch had the open shot, had a thought about it, pulled it back down. Trying to look inside. Oh, nice steal by Curry. He'll have an open route to the basket and he lays it up. Foul hard by Bogans. Crashed into the basket support. Curry gets up a little short. It's going to be the second foul down on Bogans. They were going to get Kentucky in the round. To catch up with Curry, he's one of the fastest guys in the country. Watch Bogans track him down and get a block. He found him, but I think he's making a statement saying, hey, we've got to start getting up and down this court and start playing like number three team in the country. He fouled him hard. It wasn't an intentional foul. He went for the ball. It was a hard swipe. And he went right across Corey's forearm, and Dennis Belton wanted an intentional foul as he's pleading his case with the officials. Western leads it by four, make it five as Curry drops one in. First point of the game for Renardo Curry. One shot, Curry's an one excellent straight defender. Straight and Hawkins and everybody in that lane have to watch out because he's got quick hands and he'll reach and grab. Those little guys get away with murder in that paint. Curry drops them both in. And Western out to a six point lead on the Wildcats, 36 to 30. Well, Western's doing it with good defense. Hockey looks a little out of sync on the offensive end. Stone throws up a jumper. didn't make the rotation quick yeah, enough. Robinson, that's his didn't third get position. Second. Big foul there. That's the third foul on Derek Robinson, the kid from Bourbon County, Paris, Kentucky, right down the road from Lexington. Three big fouls on Robinson. Go back inside to Stone again. They continue to look inside. Big man for Western Marcus moves everybody out. Finch sees that he's out of there, and he drops it. That was a good move, the old-fashioned move, a little pick. It rolled. Stone rolled. And Marcus took it straight to the basket. Nice move. He saw that Marcus went out of there with Stone and left the middle open, and Hawkins drove right to the lane. Boy, very short on that three-point attempt. Now they get it ahead to take shot. Prince takes it with the left hand. It's no good. Well, that was not a good shot by Prince. We all know about rebounds for all the jump shots. He started the fast break for UK. Got out to Prince. Two fouls on Dwight, so now the fouls are starting to mount. That's three team fouls in Prince two minutes and 47 line. seconds here into the second half. Tayshawn Prince at the line. He'll get two. Kentucky will release early when they see a three-point jump of the because they know it's going to go well for the gun. them out of transition early. Tayshawn Prince was one of three from the free throw line. Now he's two of four, so 50%. Sparks back in the game. Handoff came in for Boyden. Handoff in as well. Second one good by Prince, so he knocks them both down. And it's a two-point Western lead. Pressure by the Wildcats. Western had problems with the pressure early on. Now this is man-to-man. Just a little token of man-to-man -man pressure. Hawkins possibly the quickest Wildcat on the floor right now. Stepped up the pressure defense, really in 
inside the shirt to Wesker now. Handoff has a thought. Now he does fire the three and he knocks it down. Big shot by Randolph. Set out last year. He's a sophomore, but he knocked that one down. And he stepped right up. Fired it in. And again, it's a Western five-point lead. They've got the ball again. Handoff came down the other end. Played very good defense on Prince. Force Prince to take a bad shot. Kentucky presses again, but Curry breaks it easily. Rolls three. No good. A little too hard. Handoff with the rebound. A little jump. Oh, that's good. He's giving him some good minutes. He's giving Coach Felton an offensive stick back to three. You love that kind of bench production. Smith. Is this good for your team to be tested like this? Well, it's very good to lose. Uh, but I'll tell you what, they're getting tested right now. They need to be able to control the they're missing, I feel, their leader, J.P. Flubbins. Well, so they call these guys down and to start over. Get the ball inside. Talk to Prince, talk to Bogans. They can't lead from the forward the position. You lead from the guard position. Big foul on Chris Marcus, his second. And Chris is going to come out of the game. So Marcus comes out, and he takes a seat. And now Western decidedly smaller with him out of the game. Williams comes in for him. Nate Williams is 6'8". Bogan, jumper, no good, rebound. Goes off of Hayes' hand. He's held from behind. Tommy can't believe they didn't call this. Hayes almost got his jersey ripped off. But it'll be Western's ball, their biggest lead of the game. Western leads Kentucky 41 to 34. 15-56 to play in the basketball game. We'll be back with more after this on Fox Sports Net. It's the Pizza Hut NABC Classic. Don't forget, tomorrow it's day two of the NABC Classic, starting at 6 o'clock. Stay tuned. People be following the game. It's the Ohio Sports Report. Western Kentucky's three of seven to start its march for the second half. And Kentucky's one for five. They struggle to find the range. Halcom now into the game gives him a little bit of a presence inside. Big kid at 6'10, but only 225 pounds. He's out of the range. Handoff is using the glass. He has really given them a spark. The center of athletic he is pretty strong inside. Can't find an answer for it. And the last three buckets for Western, including the three in there. And it's a nine-point lead as Prince drives. A left-handed runner is no good. Stone battles inside. Cliff Hopkins comes up with it. Now it's battle for a spin around and jump on the ball. Hopkins and Halcom. I'll tell you what. Hawkins is a battler in there. Well, on both sides, you got Curry and Hawkins. I, I, I wouldn't want to try to get between them. <laughs> but both these teams are going, are going hard at it, but Western's just stepping it up a notch as far as intensity. Getting on that floor, they had two guys on the floor. Dennis Felton, his assistants, Pete Herman, Ken McDonald, Brooke Tucker, all urging on their team. On the Kentucky bench, pretty calm as Mike Sutton. There's David Hobbs and Reggie Sutton as David Hobbs is up yelling. Jump ball again and don't forget the, the experimental rules on tied up balls, they will jump it. I love these court. I love these jump balls. Everybody fighting for position. I forgot all about There's no circle anymore, so the guys just kind of lined up anywhere. Staggered stone. But Hawkins actually got the tip. This is unbelievable. Big scoring tonight. Western 14 points. Kentucky just two points from the much Valley Hoop bench of the Wildcats. Hawkins drives in. The left handed runner falls. He's trying as hard as he can to fire up this team. Rolls on the other end. Three in and out. But Marcus is right there. And he's fouled from behind by Hayes. Hayes thought he had a good spike. You can see. The whole game plan of Western is saying, I'm not, you know, you hit me with a punch, I'm coming back with two. They get the rebound, take the ball out of the basket, run down, transition, get the jump shot, hit Marcus on the break. There's the inbounds, pull it out and rolls. We'll start things all over again as he pulls it out top. 14 35 to play, and Western still with the big cushion. 23 36. Kentucky into a 2 3 zone. Trying to find something to work defensively against this squad. Marcus moves underneath against Stone and couldn't move him out of the way. Shot hit the bottom of the board. Hawkins had a thought for three steps 
inside, jumper, no good. Rebound battle for by two Wildcats, and Curry comes away with it. Pulls away and lays it in. Well, the Hawkins took the jumper, and he's got to sprint back. He's the point guard. He doesn't have to stop the defense. Don't the defense for the, for the Wildcats. Prince is short again. Today, in the shoot-around, everything he shot was short. He was really on himself. It's carried over to tonight. He's not following through on his jump shot. He's going up tentatively, and he's not taking balanced shots. Good crowd tonight, over 23,000, of course, a sellout, but a strong contention from Western, and they are cheering strong for their team, and that's going to be a foul by number 30, Nate Williams, a 6'8", 240-pound junior. It's his second foul. It's a good way of getting a rebound here by my guy's back. He had both, he both hands on him. Jared Fitch comes back in. You know, he broke his nose in that first exhibition game. He said, hey, I'm just playing. He doesn't wear a mask. Doesn't have any type of tape on him. He's out there playing. Well, I think when Blevins is out, that hurts Fitch. Because they have to come and respect Fitch's jump shot. And that gets, or uh, Blevins' jump shot. And that gets Fitch open. But the whole dimension changes when you lose your starting point guard. Although Harkins done a really job tonight. So now Kentucky goes with Hayes. Still and Prince in the back line along with Fitch and Bogans. Now it's still out front. It's off the Fitch. And it's stolen away by Rolls. Rolls and Bogans. He goes up, plays it in. That was excellent anticipation. They obviously did some scouting. Found out what plays UK runs very easy. You gotta look before you pass the ball. Biggest lead of the game is now 11, and Tony Smith rips off his jacket. Take it off the dribble or they set up plays for him. Prince has got to take better shots. Bogans has got to take shots. Yeah, period. Derek Robinson back in the game for Western. Tubby Smith again up urging his team on. Now Jules Kamara back in the game. Very talented youngster who missed all of last season. At six foot 11. And a bad pass by Finch. It was tipped by Sparks in the state Kentucky ball. With that double low post with Estill and, and Kamara, they do have the size advantage, but they have to make sure when they get the ball into them, if they're not open, dump it back out for the open three-pointer. But also, when they get it down low, try to take it strong to the basket because the big man's not in there for Western. Hawkins back in for Fitch. Hawkins sets things up at the point. 15 on the shot clock on the tip. There was no reset. So Bogans drives inside. He's fouled as he went up strong to the hole. That's on Robinson. That's going to be four. Nope, it's on Pandoff. That's his third. What Western is doing every time the Wildcats drive to the lane. They're going for the ball. Their arms and their hands are moving. They're reaching in. When you take the ball down low to drive, they're grabbing it, grabbing the ball. Got to protect the ball. When Kentucky drives, it seems like there's six or seven red shirts in there. They all collapse into the lane. This could be Bogan's first point since the first half, and he misses. Well, make no mistake about it. This is a big, big game for Western. And they've come out, and they've been, they've met the challenge. Now the Kentucky Wildcats have to defend their turf. This is their state. As far as they're concerned, they have to defend their turf. Six Kentucky players on this Western Kentucky roster. And Bogan's misses both. With the rebound. Controlled by Kentucky. Hawkins had an open three, but passes on it. Not a great three-point shooter. Bogut. Now Hayes got his man in the wall. Western is playing absolutely great defense, switching and hedging, helping out, helping out Wheatsock. Doing a very good job defensively. 47 to 36 is your score with 11.59 to play in this basketball game. Western on top of the Kentucky Wildcats. We'll be back with more of the Pizza Hut NABC Classic. It's the Pizza Hut NABC Classic. Western leads Kentucky 47 to 36. 
don't forget, coming up immediately following the game, it's the Ohio State. Turnover's been the difference. Kentucky's got five in the second half to two for Western. Four points off those turnovers for Western. Western led by two at the half, 32-30. They're on a 15-6 run here in the second half. And Keith Bogans makes the steal, almost throws away and picks it back up. But Williams drove the lane, lost his head back. Couldn't see where he was going. I'll tell you what, Jules Kamara just looks lost out there. He got the ball down on the block, had a clear baseline, and instead of going up strong to the basket, he looked to pass it away. He was six feet away, and instead of going to the hole, Steve, he looked to pass. Well, at this stage of the game, it is utter chaos on the Kentucky Wildcat half-court offense. They're not executing, and they're thinking too much down here instead of just playing naturally. Derek drops it back in the game. Western leads it by 11, and Robinson has it out front. Goes off the Williams. He tried to go down low to Marcus. Ball's on the ground, and it's taken away by Jules Kamara. Moves it off to Cliff Hawkins, and Hawkins will start the offense. They're going to get it in here quick. They're down 11, and there's only 11 minutes to play. Hayes came over the top. There'll be a foul on Hawkins. Looks like an offensive foul on Bogans. That's his third on Bogans. Third. Call that one on Bogans, number 10. That's his third foul. And again, Western with a chance to extend that lead even more. So Western's in control right now. They need every possession to make sure it counts because Kentucky's, Kentucky's going to make a run. They just haven't made it yet. They're going to make a run. And Western has to stay this get this run off. And that's the man that Western's going to ride home. Chris Marcus on the inside, lays it up and in. That gives him eight. He's going to the free throw line to try to get three in the hard way. Watch this. This guy is as big as two people. He goes around, he just turns the corner. Estelle hit him on the top side, but by the time the big guy turned around, he was a body and a half around him. Chris Marcus, his first attempt at the free throw line tonight. He'll get one. 13-point lead, eight points and four rebounds. He averaged 12 rebounds a game last year. Led the nation in rebound. Three throws, a little hard. Fritz is right there. Jeez. Top of the block to pull that one down. He's going to need to pull those rebounds down in the next 10 minutes. They're going to have a problem here at the arena. Yeah, it's like the fans here sitting on their hands waiting for the Wildcats to make their run. And it hasn't come so far. Hawkins looks and drives all the way in. Nice dish inside. Marcus Esco misses the easy chippy. He's fouled from behind. The only forward penetration this half is come when Cliff Hawkins takes the ball to the lane. Makes an excellent pass. Guys aren't going to the basket. You can't worry about how big Chris Marcus is. He has to take it strong. Nice pass by. Nice pass. But you gotta finish. It's a three-point play. Got a fifth. Esco hits the first free throw. It's his first point of the night. I wouldn't want to try to keep track of all the lineup changes that both sides have had. He thought it would only be Kentucky, but Western has changed the lineup on his every third time down. Wildcat just one and two from the free throw line. Sparks brings it up to 12 point Western. 49 to 37. I look for Westerners just to really pound the ball inside. Just go after the big guy inside. Pandoff slipped a little bit, took an extra step as he tried to get under control. And another turnover for Western. That gives them five now in the second half. Seven for the Wildcats of Kentucky. And now the crowd tries to urge on the Wildcats. Kentucky needs a nice play for basket. Maybe a three-point jump shot or a three the old-fashioned way down low. Get him, get him going here. Tubby wants Hawkins to penetrate. He does. It dishes it off to come on. Jules Kamara gets his first point of the game. Excellent penetration by Hawkins. The only guy going up and down and going vertical into the lane. Kamara cuts it to 10. Now the crowd is back into the game. Sparks tries to quell with a three. That's no good. Patting off with the rebound. Sticks a shoulder inside, loses it out of bounds. And it's Western basketball. Last touch by the Wildcats down to the baseline. And Curry comes in the game for Sparks. That was good ball movement. Sparks took a shot. I think the adrenaline got to him a little bit. A little bit long. How but it was big that three a bit of hit and knock that one? Well, I think it was a great offensive rebound by Pat. 
Curry gets it into Marcus. Boy, who'd have thought they would be in the position they are with just eight points from their big man, Chris Marcus. And that's a third foul now on Gerald Fitch. And it's not that Marcus isn't playing well. He's only touched the ball seven, eight yeah. times. He's only obsessed. He's got seven shots. That's only the fifth foul on Kentucky, so Western will get it out on the side. Western already has 17 fouls, so Kentucky's already in the bonus. And now Rose will inbound it for the Hilltoppers. It's be a big stop for the Wildcats if they can shut them down in this possession. Cut that lead under 10. Rose Panoff loves to drive into the lane. No good. Marcus, no good. But he gets it back again, lays it up. Kamara with the block. And they're going to call a foul on Jules Kamara. Tommy Smith wanted a charge on Panoff as he went flying in the lane. Didn't get it. Watch Chris Marcus. That ball was hovering around the rim. The one thing Pete Herman told me about Chris Marcus is he doesn't Marcus reach. He goes after everything with two hands. You see here, tipped it once, then two hands, gets it, takes it strong. Actually, they called the foul on Tayshawn Prince, and Marcus is at the free throw line. He missed his last attempt and only attempt of the game as Western leads by 10 and have two here. And he misses. Depending on his stamina, he's set a lot worse for the first half. He hasn't played that many minutes, so uh, he should be ready to go in the second half down low. Struggle with the free throw line. Western now 4 of 7 from the free throw line. Kentucky 9 of 17. Just over 50% for the Wildcats. And he makes the second. So 1 of 2 for Marcus, and it's again an 11 point lead with now nine minutes to play. They go right inside the stone, kicks it back to Prince, got his man in the air. Out of Kamara, back to Prince again with a two-man game. Hard again with the jumper. Saved by oh, Andrew Face out of bounds. So Derek Robinson tried to save it, but he stepped out of bounds, and Kentucky will get a fresh shot clock with 8.55 to go. Prince just is not in a rhythm shooting the ball, Steve. He's not pulling the trigger. That was a good shot. Nice pump fake. Oh, nice oh, leap oh. by Kamara inside, and he was fouled from behind by Marcus, and he can't believe it. But did you see the hops on Kamara as he went up to get that one? I thought he was going to take a one one motion. Against a big guy like this, you don't give him a chance to react. And he went up strong. Jules you give the big guy a chance to go back. You just got to try to throw it down when you're up in the air that, that high. I don't think he can grab it and, and, and gather himself. He almost, it's almost like a praying mantis as he just uncoiled and went up and got that one, pulled it down, and then one motion went right back to the basket. Marcus found him from behind. And Kamara, nice touch from the free throw line as he hits there. It's his first free throw of the game, and he knocks it down. Kamara's almost seven feet. He needs to use his finesse around Chris Marcus. He's going to be a big factor in this last eight minutes of play. Kentucky now has chipped away, and they've got another chance. It's now a nine point Western lead. But Kentucky just 11 points in the second half, and it's 50-41. Robinson comes in. Loose ball picked up by Curry, and Curry laid it in. Well, that was just a tough break for Hawkins. He stole the ball, and then Curry had to be under the basket. Just picked it up and laid it in. Hawkins' jump is no good. Stone keeps it alive, but he knocks it right to Rose. Here we go again. Curry running Western down. Now he's slowing down. Holds his window. Let's slow it up. That's a nail in your coffin. The point guard has got to gamble himself and set the guys up. He just didn't do that. Third shot. Handoff wants to take Kamara to the hole. Now he does. Lays it up. No good. Nice block out by Marvin Stone as Tayshawn Prince gets the rebound. Prince is going to go coast to coast. Takes it by himself and lays it with no call underneath the Prince's rim. Tayshawn Prince crashed to the floor. He wanted a three point play. He went down hard. Right on his side. I think he just lost his breath under there as the trainers come rushing out to the floor. Stevie took a hard spill. This well, he took it strong to the basket in transition. And I'll tell you what, I, I hope he's not hurt. We'll be back with the final eight minutes after this on Fox Sports Net. On his upper back, and you see he's smart enough to call timeout before Western can inbound, and he just tried to goop himself down there. Kentucky in the second half, 4 of 15 from the field. Western 8 of 19. Prince will take a blow. 
10 points and six rebounds. Looks like he got the wind knocked out, and sometimes yeah. you come down on your back, elbow hits you in the gut, knocks you down a little bit. 7.56 to play. Western leads 52 to 43 on Jeff Pecora along with Steve Wolf and Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky game two of the Pizza Hut NABC Classic. And Keith Bogan, the leading scorer of this Wildcat Club from a year ago, has not scored since 9.18 of the first half. Amazing. Another new lineup in for Western Kentucky with Marcus on the bench. Rolls again, fires, no good. Rebound, Gerald Fitch for a guard. Invaluable as a rebounder. Bogans cross court, Daniels open jumper, no good, real short. Stone keeps it alive, but Williams is able to pull it down, and Kamara comes over the top. Western Kentucky's doing a very good job on the defensive end, as we've said the whole game. They're boxing out, very, very strong. Even when the big guy's not in the game, you know, he, he, a lot of times when a big guy's in the game, you forget the box out because you know he's going to get the rebounds. But this smaller lineup has done an excellent job of keeping the Wildcats off the board. There's Tubby Smith. That man right there is Dennis Felton, the head man for Western Kentucky, as Williams strolls to the free throw line. No points tonight, two rebounds. Deshaun Prince comes back in the lineup, and he'll replace Jules Kamara. They almost see eye to eye, those two. Kamara as center, Prince to play one, two, three, or four. Well, this is Prince time again. That last drive to the basket, he's got to do more of that. His shot isn't going. He's got to recognize that as a, as a upperclassman, as a senior captain. He's to take that ball straight to the basket. Nice stroke by Williams there. Nice rotation. He's got second on the way. That's in and out. So one of two for Williams. And Westbrook holds a 10-point lead over the Kentucky Wildcats with about seven minutes to go in this basketball game. Now Bogans working out front, hasn't scored in a long time. Finch looking down low for Prince. He's going to take Van off right to the basket and use the glass. And that's what he has to do the last two plays. Prince has touched the ball and scored. Broke inside the paint. Now let's see if Western can answer as Kentucky cuts it to eight. Curry looking to go inside. Definitely was not an orthodox shot. That's going to be the fourth foul on Derek Robinson, and that's big. Derek Robinson, five points in the game, but he's played very good. He's a senior out of Paris, Kentucky. He went to Bourbon County High School. You can see what these guys do. Western Kentucky, they have Robinson down low, boxing out Stone. So they're all on the boards. That's why Kentucky's having problems. Uh, on the offensive end, because they're going to the board strong, and that's why Western is having good success on their offensive end, because everybody going to the board strong. Bourbon County High School is coached for a long time by Ross Day. Great high school coaches here in Kentucky. There's a miss, Daniels knocked it out of Marcus's hand. He goes right back to Western, Curry brings it up again. Eight-point lead, that was a big chance for Kentucky to cut into it a little bit. With six minutes to go, it's going to be the All-Americans' time. It's going to be Marcus for Western Kentucky. It's going to be Prince for the Wildcats. Nice turnaround, but it won't fall for Marcus. And they're going to call a foul on Pandoff on the rebound. He can't believe it. That's four on Pandoff. Well, the way UK is shooting free throws, the Wildcats are struck fouling. The fouls are not, it's not hurting uh, the Hilltoppers. So Pandoff has four. Robinson has four. And it looks like Boyden's going to come back in. 6'8 junior, he's got a couple fouls as well. Eric Hawkins is going to come in too, but he'll have to wait. As Daniels gets two free throws because now it's the double bonus. Ten fouls on Western. Look at the difference in free throws. Eric Daniels from Princeton High School, Cincinnati Ohio. Played for former Knickerbocker player, Paul Andrews. They are struggling mightily at the free throws. They shot 65% last year, and that's with an 85% free throw shooter in Prince on their roster. Daniels hits one of two. The good thing for Kentucky is they're chipping away one point at a time because Western Kentucky is not scoring on the offensive end. 
It's a seven point lead for Western right now as they get it into Curry. That's the guy you want. The ball in his hands. Curry breaks the press on his own. Breaks down Hawkins there. He gets it back to Sparks. He's going to take some time off the clock. The Sparks brings it back out. 5.56 to play now. So inside of six minutes to play. Western clinging to a 53 46 lead. Now they get Marcus free inside. Stone, good foul. Marcus would have easily put that one in. That was a great pass by Sparks in the corner. He knew when he got, before he got that ball, before he received it, that he was throwing that ball inside because he knew that Marcus had uh, Stone on his back. Quick reversal, do it in quick. Steve, you watch the footwork of Marcus as he worked his way around to get position on Stone to accept that pass. Good footwork that time. Yeah, and they recognize in this last six minutes, he's going to touch the ball a lot. Marcus, one of three from the free throw line. So 33% for the game. He's got nine points, eight rebounds. Free throws up. In and out. No call. So Marcus now one of four from the free throw line. Still stuck on nine points. Tough for these teams. Tough for the Tough for the good for free throw shooters in this, in this game tonight. Second free throws up. And that's hard. Pitch, nice block out on Marcus. That's what you're taught to do. Second man in, block out the shooter. So Kentucky a chance to cut it to five. Need to go back and Prince again. Hitting the ball again. But he's still inside the stone. So he wanted it. Bogan's pitch. He'll fire. It's going to be short. Run off. Going with the long way down. They get it off to Sparks and back to Curry. And he'll walk it up and take some more time off the clock. Western hasn't had a bucket in quite some time. They're going to win this game. They're going to have to score again, other than from the foul. Inside, battling for position. They're going to call it on Marvin Stone. He was just trying to get low, and that's going to be his third. Well, what happens when you have Marcus down low? Yeah, Boyton coming off, trying to give a hand's worth of help. I think he, I think he gave both hands that time. Marcus. Marcus goes back to the free throw line again. He's one for five. He just missed his last two. Just a few seconds ago. Right back to the free throw line again. Good crowd on hand tonight. Nice contingent of Western fans here. Marcus gets the shooter's roll that time as he rolls it in. He's going to be a, very, a good throw. He's going to have to shoot that free throw a little bit better. Last year he shot 56% from the field, but only 64% from the line. And as you can see, he's two of six tonight. That's not going to cut at the next level. Second free throw on the way, and that's good, right on the money. Unless you're Shaq, I'm sorry. Unless you're Shaq, I guess it's... Well, Marcus has the ability to hit the weight room and be you all know, close to Shaq. He's only playing. This is his fourth year of organized basketball. He's a, he's a heck of a talent. And as big as he is, he's still about 70 pounds smaller than Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> Let's hope he doesn't grab <laughs> Marvin Stone with a nice move to the basket. Misses. Bogans double pass blocked by Marcus. And Sparks comes up with it. Sparks splits the defenders and pulls it back out. Great move that time by Sparks. He'd have gone to the basket. He'd have been knocked out of there easily. Well, Bogans at 6'3", six, 6'4", six, six, is not going to be a match inside for 7-1. Chris Marcus. You're better off taking that ball back around. They go back inside to Marcus again. He'll work his way inside. Stone, turn around. Jumper oh. short. Rebound. Put back up and in by yes. Boyd. What a big basket for Western Kentucky's David Boyd. Well, everybody's trying to help out on Chris Marcus. When you leave your man, you have to recover. Go back and find him to box him out. Four minutes to play, and Western's lead is back to 11. Only 46 points for the Wildcats. Bogans three on the way. Oh, no good. Air ball. Pitch with the rebound. Back to Prince. Nice cover by Bogans. Lights up. No good. Rebound. Bogans pulls it down out of bounds and we Kentucky's ball. That was a great pass by Prince. Although Bogans missed it, it was a great pass by Prince. He could have shot the three, but he took the easy one inside. 350 to play. Western leads by 11. 57 to 46. We'll be back with the exciting finish after this. Leads Kentucky 57-46 in the Pizza Hut NABC Classic. Hey, coming up on Saturday on Fox Sports Day. Kentucky will get the ball out under the basket. Chris Marcus doing some net tending, just reaches up and fixes it. Back pass.
pass on the inbounds because Hawkins wasn't ready for it. Getting right in the belly, but it was knocked out of bounds by Sparks. And if he'd have been ready, Chris Marcus was caught sleeping there. He'd have had an easy layup. That he was, was left-handed, too. That was a play called out of the timeout. Yeah. You hate to see a, a miscue like that. Rebounding, it's uh, both teams nodded at 35, but Kentucky has 15 offensive rebounds to 11 for Western, and they're still down by 11. So that just tells you they're struggling inside. Second chance points tonight. Kentucky with nine, Western with seven. Kentucky will get it out on the side. It's a little bit of wetness right inside the free throw line as they try to fix up Dennis Felton sweating a little bit. Trying to sweat out a victory as Western leads it by 11. And Tubby's already taken off the jacket. He's to shirt sleeves. Next to go is going to be the tie. <laughs> well, this is a critical area right now for Kentucky with three and a half minutes to play in the game. Being down 11, every possession is, uh, is critical. They have to make sure they capitalize on it. And the three would be nice. Marvin Stone had to come out of the game. It's some blood in his mouth, and so Jules Kamara comes in for him. A little bit of a cut there. Ducky has to score, and they got to score quickly. Hawkins, they said his foot was on the line. It's just a two. Well, but at least it's a jumper. It means there's no tipping ring on that, on that rim. Rims you get at the fair when you're trying to hit those little push <laughs> rock baskets. 57 48, nine point lead. Cats are struggling mightily on the offensive end. You know where Western's going to go. Yep, they're back looking the right game. inside every time. Right back to Marcus, and Kamara goes up with him, and they're going to say he got him with the body. That was good defense by Kamara, but he can show you how strong Chris Marcus is. He went up. Jules blocked the shot. He still took it strong for the hole. Second foul on Kamara. See in the lane? He goes up with him. He did a little bit of hand on hit his left hand on there. Real strong defense. Marcus struggled from the line tonight. Three of seven. Three of eight. For sure. Stone will come right back in and Kamara will take a seat. Marvin has played inspired basketball tonight against Chris Marcus. Eight rebounds, so he's four shy of his season average of a year ago, and he led the nation with 12. Second free throw up, and that's good. So Marcus makes it a 10-point lead with 3.13 to play. Hawkins looking to go inside the stone. Now he goes to Prince. Has a little bit of a lane, lays it in for Marvin Stone, and he lays it in. Second timeout. He wants to get, as you said, just get some type of flow on the offensive end. They've only had Cliff Hawkins running the offense. Well, and I'll tell you what, 58-50. 58-50 with 2.32 to play. We'll be back with more after this. Cats in here. He makes a beautiful dish to Marvin Stone after he sucked Marcus in. And Stone laid it in off the glass, Steve. Well, both Kentucky and Western Kentucky have not been making good passes that lead to layups like that. That's only the second assist that Hawkins has, but he's leading Kentucky. They only have six on the night, six assists. Western leading Kentucky by eight, 58 to 50 with 232 to play oh, in the good. second game here at the Pizza Hut and ABC Classic. Jeff Picoro and Steve Wolf. Don't forget, we'll be back tomorrow night at six o'clock. Consolation game and the championship game, 30 minutes follows. Cliff Hawkins stops and pops, no good, a little too hard. Robinson gets it knocked out of his hands, out of bounds. It'll be Western basketball. Big, big miss there. Well, they, they, it was a good shot. Kentucky needs to hurry up, but they don't want to rush. They want to make sure they get in the offensive area, but they have to keep thinking they good shots. Oh, steal by Finch, and he lays it in. Yes. They overplayed Oscar Curry, and Robinson has the bounce pass. He's trying to hit a great Rolls and Fish stepped right in there and took it away and laid it in. That changes the whole complexion.
action of the game. That was a quick hit. It was an open shot, not a clip. And as you can see here, bad pass by Robinson. Good defense by Fitz. It's a two possession game with 2.20 to go. Steve, great anticipation that time by Fitch. He saw Curry start to his right, knew he was going to come back to the basketball. He just beat him to the spot. Well, we said all along, Fitch is one each of their glue. Last year, they're three and five. They bring Fitch into the lineup, and they reel off to go 21 and five on that stretch. So Fitch is a real active player. He can play two or three positions. They can even put him in four at his size and weight. So now the Kentucky fans are back in the game, and we'll see if Western can hold up to the pressure. They've got a six-point lead. They get it into rolls, and they go right back to Peter Robinson. Robinson will walk it up himself over the timeline. 2-11 to play in the basketball game, and Western with that six-point lead. Derek Robinson to Curry. Curry's going to take it all the way down, and a charter just kick shot Prince on his ground. Steve, we said at the start of the game, the one thing that Tommy Smith demands out of his players, you play defense. Well, and, and your senior leader, Prince got back there quick, took the charge. That's what you do when you're an All-American. Two great defensive plays in a row by the Wildcats and a chance to cut it to four. Hawkins goes all the way in to Stone and he's fouled from behind, so Stone will go to the free throw line. That's Hawkins' penetration. Now, Stone wasn't ready for the ball. He should have had a three-point play. But Hawkins penetrated and gave him a beautiful pass. Watch here. Great penetration. Nice dish off. Stone's got to be ready for the basketball and take it up strong. You got to be going, moving to the basket. Second foul on Rawls as Marvin Stone goes to the free throw line where he's four of five tonight. And that's all. Sparks comes in for the Four of six now from the free throw line. Sparks comes in for Curry. Sparks will be the ball handler. If he makes this, you really don't need to foul yet if you're Kentucky. Unless you get somebody who hit him. If uh, Marcus gets the ball down low, you might want to foul him. But uh, try to play good defense. Stone missed a both, and then Western missed Boyd, who was wide open, straight into the basket on the other end. 142 to play. Boy, two huge misses by Marvin Stone at the free throw line. If the Cats lose, that's going to be the reason. 12 of 24 from the free throw line. Sparks, open baseline jumper, no good, and Bogans gets the rebound. Finch, he's got Hopkins on the wing, but nice recovery by Western. They were back. Finch has to pull it back out. Now they go right through the lane again. Hopkins had a three, didn't take it. Gives it off to Stone. He lays it up, no good. Short again, Marvin Stone.
see they score. And with that rebound, Chris Marcus now is a double-double. He's played an excellent game, even though he's been struggling with his win. Through his injury, he's played a very good game. Timeout on the floor with defense you can establish early in the season. Kentucky will rebound from this, and I think they still have a very, very good shot at the national championship. And Western's going to go deep in the NCAA tournament, too. Well, the wake-up call will come early for Tubby Smith and his Wildcats. Playing without starting point guard, J.P. Blevins, and one of the top outside shooters, freshman Rashad Carew. Kentucky will fall to Western. As the big man, Marcus, hits the first free throw. He's got one more, misses, and only 10 seconds left in this basketball game. Hawkins gives it off to Prince, and it's stolen away by Patrick Smart. Spring can just rock out the clock. 